Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We thank our bells of praise for calling us to worship this day on this Palm Sunday. What a good day to be gathered together as God's people to hear His word and to receive His gifts. And so just a few announcements before we begin today. Palm Sunday does mark the beginning of Holy Week, which means it's a time when we will gather together a few times here at church this week to remember and uh, those events of that first Holy Week. Uh, the Holy Week schedule has uh, been out on, on the announcements and also in your bulletin, so we invite you to refer to that, and we look forward to seeing you uh, this week, both Monday, Thursday at 6.30, Good Friday, either at 1.15 or at 6.30, and then again on Easter Sunday, next Sunday, either for our sunrise service at 6 a.m. or our other services at 8 or 10.30 next week. Also, in addition to that, we have Easter breakfast next Sunday from 7 to 10, and we look forward to seeing you there. And if you have the children in your family, we look forward to seeing you on Saturday for our Easter egg hunt here at church. Uh, another announcement to remind you of today, there are goodies to be had and uh, to be enjoyed in the fellowship hall today. It's our Puppets Easter snack sale. They've made uh, special Easter treats and they're selling them in the uh, fellowship hall today. And so we invite you to uh, catch some of those before they're gone after service. Uh, with that, those are our announcements today, and so we'll turn our attention to uh, worship as we talk about this Sunday, as we read in John 12, and as we uh, hear of our King, Jesus, who rides into Jerusalem on a donkey, and he's worshipped as the King, as the King he is. But we also know that in that riding into Jerusalem, he's not only a King, but he's also riding toward his death. His death on the cross for us. And so it makes this day and it makes this whole week that follows truly a bittersweet Sunday for us. May God bless us as we talk more about that in our message today. As we begin, let's do so with a word of prayer and I invite you to join me for that. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you yet again for calling us together to hear your word, to receive your forgiveness, and to uh, joyfully return those praises and the thanks that you have given us on our hearts. Lord, bless us today as we uh, hear your word and as we grow together in our faith. We pray this together in Jesus' name. Amen. We begin our service by singing together a great Palm Sunday hymn. And for that, I invite you to stand as we sing this hymn together. All glory, laud, and honor.
make our beginning this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Since we are gathered here to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first then consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear God's word of mercy and his word of grace spoken anew to you this day. Our Lord's word says, You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. And so, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death on the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we're blessed through the gift of music and song from Christ Lutheran for us.
the Lord is always for the blessing of Christ Lutheran Quran. At this time, we continue our service as we hear from God's word for us this day. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The Old Testament reading for the Sunday of the Past is from Deuteronomy chapter 32. The Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants, which he sees that their power is gone, and there is nothing remaining, bond or free. Then he will say, Where are their gods, the rock in which they took refuge, who ate the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you. Let them be your protection. See now I, even I, am he, and there is no God beside me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from Philippians chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has exalted him, and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven, and on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. This time we invite the congregation to stand as we hear together and as we read together God's word today from the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord even the king of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, God, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's soul. Jesus' disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated, and we'd invite all the children to come forward uh, for a special children's message up front. Have a seat up front. I would sit down and join you, but my microphone's being temperamental today, so we're not going to risk it. I'll just stand up and talk to you here. How are you guys doing today? Good. Great. Hey, today's an exciting day. You know, in the church here, it's called Palm Sunday, and we have something at church this week uh, that's new for this Holy Week that's coming up now in this next week. They're called Holy Week Passports. Holy Week Passports. And guess what? I have one for each one of you. We're going to talk a little bit more about what these are. So I'll hand them out to you today. You know, if you have a passport in real life, why would you need a passport in real life? What would it be good for? Do you know? I know it's a, it's, a, it's a thinker question, isn't it? You know, if you have a passport in real life, it's good because if you travel or if you go on vacation, especially to a foreign country, usually you need a passport. Because a passport will tell people in that country what your name is, and it probably has a picture of you too. So they know who you are, and they'll let you in to, your, to their country and 
they'll let you back in to your country when you go home. Well, if you notice on the back of your passport, what's on the back? There's a spot there, right? It says this passport belongs to, and there I want you, when you get back to your queue, to write your name so that you know that it's your passport to keep and that any, anyone else who sees it knows it is too, and you can keep it. Uh, you can keep it. And then there's something else that passports are good for too, though, sometimes. Sometimes when you go to a foreign country, they'll take your passport, they'll find a blank page, and then they'll take a stamp and they'll stamp it with a stamp from that country. And then when you get home, sometimes you can look through your passport and say, and remember all the stamps you got. And when you see those stamps, guess what? You remember that you got to go to that country. You get to remember everything you did. You get to remember everything you learned while you were there. You know, that's what we're doing this week, too. Because if you see, there's all these different pages. And what's this first page? What does that say? Palm Sunday. You're right. So that's today's passport page. So today in church, we're learning about what happened on Palm Sunday. Do you know what, what, what did happen on Palm Sunday? We heard about it there in the gospel reading. You know, Jesus, he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And what did all the people say around him? Were they excited? They were. They were shouting shouts of Hosanna. They were praising him just like the king Jesus is. Is Jesus our king in our life? He is. A king's in control, right? And is Jesus in control of everything? He is. Something else about a king, though. Not only is a king in control, but a good king, well, a good king takes care of someone. Who does a good king take care of? Uh, people are sick. A anyone in his kingdom, right? A good king is going to watch over and take care of anyone in his kingdom. And that's what Jesus does for us. Because you know, when Jesus rode in to Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, Jesus knew what was going to happen just a few days later. Some people were going to put him to death on a cross. Jesus could have stopped, right? He could have turned around and went the other way. But did Jesus do that? No. He kept on riding. He kept on going. You know why? Because Jesus, as a good king, wanted to take care of you and me. And as he died on the cross, he died on the cross to forgive us of all of our sins, so that we could be forgiven, so that we could be a part of God's family forever. So I want you to remember what Jesus did on Palm Sunday, how he rode into Jerusalem, how he's our king, both now and truly for all time. So we're going to pray in just a second, and then I'm going to give you a sticker, a Palm Sunday sticker, so that you can put in your passport and you can remember what Jesus did this day. And then I want you to bring your passport back throughout the rest of the week, and you can fill it out with other stickers for each service you're here this week, okay? Okay, let's pray together, and the congregation can join in and repeat after me, and we'll pray together today, okay? Dear God, Dear God thank you for Palm Sunday. Thank you for Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Where we see Jesus, where we see Jesus as our King and Savior. As our King and Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, as we uh, stamp some passports, our congregation will join together in singing our next hymn.
sometimes this Sunday before Easter in the church year, it's referred to in different ways. We often call this day Palm Sunday because the crowd who welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem on that day long ago, well, the, palm, the crowd waved palm branches in the air, and they laid them at Jesus' feet in praise of their coming King. Sometimes we also call this day the Passion Sunday, or the Sunday of the Passion, as we recognize the events that will come for Jesus in the days soon to follow, those events which lead to his death. Both of those titles kind of highlight the two extremes that we may feel on a day like today, from praise to pain. So perhaps there is yet another way that we could refer to this day. Perhaps we could call it a bittersweet Sunday. Because isn't that the collective experience of the events of this Holy Week? You know, if something is literally bittersweet, it tastes both bitter and sweet at the same time. Like a piece of dark chocolate. And of course, we know that events can be bittersweet, too. If you've watched any of the last-second buzzer-beating finishes in this year's NCAA basketball tournament, well, you know what I mean, right? A whole season of hard work can come down to a half-court shot banking in off the glass, or a layup being released just two tenths of a second too late. Just like that, one team rejoices in sweet relief, and the other team is left with the bitter sting of defeat. You know, watching any game like that without a rooting interest can't help but leave you maybe feeling a little bittersweet yourself. Palm Sunday is a day that is bittersweet for us as Christians, for on this day we see Jesus riding into Jerusalem and sitting on a donkey and receiving a king's welcome. But we know, we know what soon will happen. We know the bitter pains that this week will yet hold. It's a bittersweet Sunday and it's a bittersweet week that lies ahead too. And when we think about it, whether we like it or not, our lives, well, our lives are so often accurately described as bittersweet, too. You know, the British rock group, The Verb, well, they haven't produced many musical hits. But their one hit, their one well-known song is a track called Bittersweet Symphony. You might recognize the striking opening string introduction to the song, or perhaps the main line of the song that goes like this. It's a bittersweet symphony, this life. That's our experience too, isn't it? Life, at times it's bitter, at times it's sweet, and often we experience both, even at the same time. Life and death, health and sickness, relationships and discord, acceptance and rejection, success and failure, joy and pain, stress and peace, victory and loss. The bitterness and the sweetness of life mixed together and often it's hard to find even a moment in our lives where we don't have one without the other present in some form or fashion, too. If that's the experience that you have felt in your life, know that you're not alone, for in this world in which we live, life is full of bitter moments. That's because our world is filled with sin, of which we each contribute to that problem ourselves. You see, sin is the bitter ailment that assaults our lives and our world, and it leaves us bitter, and it leaves us sick. Have you ever seen this plant before? It's called a bittersweet vine. 
The vine produces little clumps of red and yellow berries, and at first glance, well, it may look pretty sweet. Birds certainly think so, as you can often uh, catch them happily munching away on these berries. But if a human, if you were to eat some of these, you would realize very quickly just how bitter this sweet-looking berry really is. Bitter enough to cause stomach, stomach angst, or diarrhea, or vomiting, or even worse. And even though that sounds like a plenty good list of terrible things, the truth is that those side effects can't even hold a candle to the bitterness of our sin and to the effects that our sin causes in our lives. Because sin leads us to worry and to fear. Sin leads us to shame and to despair, and the severe bitterness of our sin, it exposes this bitter truth that on our own we can't save ourselves. We can't stop sinning. We can't take our sin away. Just like a, per a poor person whose intestines are suffering from a bittersweet berry snack. We, too, need help to cure the bitterness and the pain that comes from our sin. Because the prognosis of our sin sickness, it isn't just a sore stomach, but rather it's death. We need help. We need a Savior to do what we cannot. So let's turn our attention this day to Jesus. As he rides into Jerusalem on this bittersweet Sunday, for Jesus is going to comfort, Jesus is going to confront, comfort us, but confront the bitterness of sin himself. You know, if you close your eyes and if you listen closely enough, you might just be able to hear some of the bittersweet sounds of that first holy week. And I give you permission. Go ahead. Close your eyes and try it. What is it that you hear? Do you hear the sweet whoosh of palm branches swaying back and forth, mixing in with the bitter clank of nail being driven into wood, and the bitter slicing of nail being driven through flesh? Do you hear the sweet sounds of Hosanna from the joyous crowd mixing in with riotous and bitter refrains that shout, Crucify Him, just days later? Do you hear the sweet and joyful prancing of a donkey's feet who carried a king into Jerusalem, mixing with the bitter tramp of soldiers' marching feet who led a man and his cross up a hill to die. You know, as we hear these sounds, as we picture and as we imagine Jesus riding into Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday, it's hard to know whether we should smile or whether we should cry. Does Jesus enter the city in lowliness or in pomp? Is he coming to bow his head to die or to reign in power? The answer, well, the answer is a bittersweet one. Yes. Jesus comes in both of these ways and for both of these reasons. For Jesus entered Jerusalem as a king who had come to reign, but not to reign over all in pride or terror, but to reign over his people in love. The donkey that Jesus sat upon on that first bittersweet Palm Sunday should have pointed the people to just that. Yes, this, king, this was a king riding before them, but no, this was not the type of king that the people had ever known or experienced before. For unlike other kings, this king would come, as he said of himself, not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. For you see, on this bittersweet Sunday, our Lord rode into Jerusalem as a king, 
coming to reign over his people, but also as a man on his way to die. Bitter and sweet at the same time. Jesus took our sin and our bitterness upon himself as he journeyed to that cross. He died there to take away our sin that we might be given something so sweet in return. God's forgiveness and new life in Christ. And because Jesus has done just that, well, our sin prognosis, it has changed. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the truth is this. We are sinners because of our own doing, but we are saints because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross and in the empty tomb. And that means in our life here on earth that we live as sinners, we live as saints, both at the same time. <clears throat> Perhaps the verb was right after all, that our lives are indeed a bittersweet symphony, one of sin and one of grace. Our bitter sin and God's sweet grace in Jesus Christ. And so as we begin this bittersweet week in the church year, I would encourage each of us not to run from the bittersweet feelings that come with Christ's passion and death, but rather let us embrace them. Let us not overlook or pass over the events of this week, but instead let us remember them and thank the Lord for what he did for us through them all. For as hard and as bitter as they might be, the suffering and death of our Savior and King brings about for us something that we so desperately need. It's the one thing that we could not give ourselves. It's the sweetness of God's forgiveness and grace that takes our sins away. And so let us gather together again throughout this holy week ahead, not just next Sunday on Easter morning, but also on Monday, Thursday, and on Good Friday, too, for only through the bitter pains of Jesus come the sweetness of Jesus' Easter joys for us. Only through the bitterness that Jesus endured in our place do we realize the sweetness of his salvation freely offered and given to us in faith. There is no sweet or joyous Easter celebration awaiting us next week without the bitterness that comes from the events leading up to it. Jesus came to reign as our king, but to do that as a loving king, he had to die in our place. And he did just that. To take away our bitterness. To take away our sin. To take away our fear. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's pole. And because he has, we remember that the bitterness of Palm Sunday's humility and the bitterness of Monday Thursday's betrayal and the bitterness of Good Friday's death will undoubtedly give way to the sweetness of Easter's resurrection and life. Because our King has come to make it so. And he promises that when he comes again, all of our bitterness will be once and forever and for all time be gone for good. Today, on this Palm Sunday, as Jesus rides into Jerusalem, we begin our final leg of our Lenten journey towards Easter Sunday. And yes, the journey is a bitter one. For it is a vivid reminder of our sin and our desperate need of a Savior. But it is also a sweet journey too. So at the same time, we are reminded of God's love for us. A love that he has made known for us in Jesus Christ, our King and our Savior. Who takes the bitterness of our sin away and gives us in return his sweet salvation even for all time. In Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Now having heard God's word proclaimed, I invite you to stand as we confess together our common Christian faith through the words of the 19th century. 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, the light of light, very God of very God, begotten of not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again in glory to judge the
both now and until life everlasting, to depart in our Lord's peace, forgiven and free of all of your sins. Amen. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We close our service today by singing together our final prayer. 